All Eyes on Fishing with Mitch Peterson, Josh Sheldon, and Brad Qualley, leading you to the next level. Hey everybody, welcome back to All Eyes on Fishing. Tonight we're going to be talking about bass fishing for Wally. What? Bass fishing what? for walleye. <laughs> but, yeah. You crazy? So we're, I know. we're walleye fishermen predominantly, but we do get out there and, and, and pitch for those uh, bass quite a bit. But we've also learned pitching for bass, we end up catching walleye. So we're like, hmm, there's a lot of crossover. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I think it's important to um, really expand your horizons. Right? Like every year we all talk about this. What's the, what's the one technique you want to do this year or pick a technique every year to, to focus on? that can expand your arsenal, right? Well, that's exactly, you're, you're saying that, pick it this year. Last year, me and Mitch focused on that. Yeah. Because we'd caught so many shallow, we're like, we're really gonna focus on that. Right. And we had, for years before that, we had done it over and over and over, but not the consistency that we did last year. We really committed to it, and we had a lot of success. Right. Yeah, you know, here, here's the thing, you know, coming from Minnesota, it's kind of funny, you know, they, and, and of course this isn't a hundred percent true with everybody, but there's a lot of people back in the, in the walleye belt, we'll say that, yeah, they fish with a jig and a minnow, right? They Lindy rig, they maybe pull cranks or whatever, but maybe, it, maybe. Yeah. And you know what? It's cause they haven't, to me anyway, it feels like they haven't been forced to expand well, <laughs> their, and I, their techniques because they catch them. Right. I think know? it's forced to expand is the key. The key thought is. Uh, I think that's the difference also between, you know, once you go east of the Mississippi, I think the walleye belt, you know, the more, the predominantly, you know, on the Great Lakes, a lot of times they troll cranks or spinners, open water type trolling, big water stuff, boards. And then you go on to the, in, you know, the I say inland, right? Like it's mm -hmm. ocean, but you go on to the smaller lakes and um, they do a lot of slip bobbers and lindy rigs and live bait rigs. But you come come west, come west of the Mississippi and we have to do it all. I mean, we really have to, mm -hmm. You know, we control cranks one day and then we'll be casting jigs to shore in a couple feet of water the next because that's where the fish well, are. Well, but here's the thing. In those areas, let's say you're fishing down in your neck of the woods where you grew up down by Heron Lake, there's plenty of bodies of water around there. Oh, yeah. And you fished jig and a minnow, you know, lindy, mm -hmm. bit, lindy rig, whatever. But if you were out in your boat and you knew what you knew now there you would be like oh, there's a wind blowing shore oh there's some cattails out there i'm gonna go pitch those because right. you know that there's fish in there yeah. you you weren't forced because you had such success jigging sure. you weren't yeah. forced to go do it that. was so what, what was we're trying passed to do down is, to them year after year exactly you know, so, generation so what we're trying to get at in this podcast is you there's a lot of places that where you can find active fish and catch them but when that bite is slower if you want to try something new this is a great technique to start expanding or your these are great techniques yeah it yeah. is it is well all right so we gotta because this is this is actually kind of fun right and, and exciting to talk about and but we have to start to narrow it down for our our podcast let's, let's talk about a couple of them then let's talk about swim baits and we'll talk about jerk baits jerk baits okay, okay. so we'll start out with those two and we'll just see where it goes from there but Perfect. let's let's talk swim swim baits right paddle tails um you know twister i even tails, twister though. tails i even go with that you know of course that's not a you know typical quote-unquote swim bait body but it's no. still the same type of concept where you are casting jigs up to some sort of structure whether it be brush whether it be weeds whether it be shoreline, uh, shoreline yeah, trees two, two feet deep and sand tree you know, stumps or, or whatever mm -hmm. stuff that you would normally if you saw a boat way back in a cut right and for for us we have um, a lot of these reservoirs are in um, uh, canyon type mm -hmm. settings right so we have we have small coves and cuts that can go way back and they get narrow and they can still be pretty deep but they get narrow if you saw a boat way way back in the back of one of those cuts you'd think ah bass fishermen mm -hmm. back there cast them for for large mouth or big small laser spots or something but the fact of the matter is a lot of those guys go back there fishing for those bass and they end up catching huge walleye yeah of course yep. and i think it's important for us walleye fishermen to not necessarily see a you know a boat back in the brush and think oh it's a bass fisherman back there yep. because there are a lot of walleyes to be had back there mixed in yep yep and the shallow water i think that's the the biggest key for me the what i really look at is bass fishing for walleye it's not like you go for largemouth bass out in that you know 18 foot yeah you're pitching a fast, fat and, cat. and, and no. vertical or vertical jigging you know right. for, for bass no and why is that it's the location you know the, a lot of those bass are up there shallow in feeding 
um, you know, especially morning, evening, yada, yada. Well, that's what really opened it up to me. You know, growing up in, in soda, no, I would never think shallow for walleyes, really. No, it's the traditional, you know, 15, 20 right. feet, you know, or, or the drop and, the, and yeah. they're here every year kind of thing. Well, wow. It, the, the wall I go a lot shallower than people think and a lot of times during the day you know it doesn't Absolutely. it's not just in morning we fish a gin clear lake out here me and Mitch were a couple years ago I mean gin gin clear as it can get clear yeah. I mean and we were casting in at noon yeah with it's probably 90 out sun just blaring down you're cooking out there yep. two feet of water yep catching ice well and, and it's true this time of year early early spring um, I recently went out again, a nice day, middle of the day, and um, you know, in a lake that is just chocked full of fish. Not only walleye, but bass, trout, crappie, wiper, you name it. That lake's got a ton of fish. We had a hard time marking any fish deeper than 15, 20 feet of water. I mean, it was like, where's all the fish? Mm -hmm. So, you know what that means? I mean, that means those fish are pushed up shallower than what you can see with your sonar. And so we fished in, you know, Casting up, the boat was in six feet. We cast up to a foot, foot and a half, and we caught bass and walleye coming out of, you know, uh, whimsical or, or whimsy brush. You know, that's kind of patches here and yeah, there, whatever it is, yeah. and uh, and just pitching up into there and, and doing a you know really slow pitch tail or, or rolling a jig real slow, and and that's where those fish were. Well, so I think it's important to to know that that it's. If you're not seeing them on your graph, like you said, Mitch, mm -hmm. every year they're here, or it's too early and they're not there, and you can't find any fish. Like, where'd all the fish mm -hmm. go? Yeah, because they're in two feet of water, and you can't see them on your I, graph. I want to yeah. talk about this, because it made me think about when you are talking about it, is mm -hmm. last year, we got actually a YouTube video on this one, um, with us casting up shallow. We were fishing, um, before we shot the video, we were out, uh, we were marking quite a few fish in that, I think it was 18, 21 feet. Mm -hmm. and we were vertical jigging them and then we started pulling bottom bouncers on them and they just weren't going we're like what the heck and so we moved in shallow because we already had our jigs on that we were jigging with we moved in shallow we parked in like seven or eight feet of water and it was every third or fourth cast we were hooking up so i said mitch take a video this won't take long and we were catching 20 to 22 inch fish we cut a quite a few like every other cat yeah. it was yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah. so i said take a video real quick and he's like i don't want to because yeah. i want to <laughs> get fish, I yeah. get fish. And I go, just do it yeah because so, uh, i'm still fishing so yeah I was, I was fine with it <laughs> such a bully <laughs> so yeah. so look at it on, on the youtube video i'm pitching a quarter ounce white twister tail yeah. we were parked in seven eight feet of water berkeley gulp was all it was right that's yeah. all it was yeah super simple and we were pitching up to like three foot of water um, I don't think it, we weren't in because the weeds were pretty heavy from shore, so we had just been globbed up. So yeah. we were stopping. It was probably three feet of water, and we're working it back. And we drove up there first to see what the contour looked like, and it went from six, seven, or I mean, it was seven, eight. That's right, seven, yeah. eight. And all of a sudden, it went five. And yeah. there was a nice flat shallow. So we were pitching up into that three to five foot of water. Right. And as soon as it started coming down that little break, bam, bam they'd hit it. It was awesome. Yep. Right. It was, we fished hundreds of times on the water and we talked about it afterwards this is probably one of our top 10 days right on the water yeah. and it's because we went shallow even though we were marking fish we were picking yeah. them up occasionally but it was one every 10 15 well, minutes and that's a great point oftentimes and, and i saw this in one of our tournaments where we were marking fish in like you said 15 20 feet mm -hmm. and i mean a lot of fish like the bottom is just carpeted with them tons of arches up off the bottom you're thinking oh yeah let's do some bouncers right mm -hmm. throw down some bouncers spinners slow death N nothing i mean couldn't get them to go right those weren't the active fish but we moved the boat up and it was a steep bank so one of those banks that's like a cliff and the water was up against it but it was probably about a three and a half four foot flat you know tilt up the motor a little do bouncers in three and a half to four feet of water and just one fish after another to, you know, I mean, our biggest fish out of three feet, three and a half feet of water was eight and a half pounds. I mean, so they're up there. They were up there right against the closest we could get to that bank, the better. And the brush, you know, like you said, the brush kind of came out a little bit off of that mm -hmm. steep bank. We stayed on the edge of the brush and the fish were just right up in there. All those fish at 20 feet wouldn't go. The fish in three to four feet, you know, it was mm -hmm. one every two, three Middle minutes. Middle of the day. Middle, all day middle of the day and we you know we end up getting seventh in the tournament out of 100 boats because i mean we were right up against the shore mm -hmm. so so with all of that said let's talk about gear real quick 
if you're going to use equipment, let's start with rod reel line, okay? Because everybody asks, you know, what, what do you use for rod? What do you use for reel? I, I am not a bait casting guy. I have used bait casters, but when I am casting jigs especially, that is just a way to, lighter jigs too, that's just a way to ask for backlash and to have a whole day mm -hmm. full of hell. So what I do is I, I like spinning spinning gear. I'll go with the Fireline uh, Crystal or, or Tracer or, or a high vis and I'll do, uh, um, usually I'll go, I'll bump it up to 12 pound test because if we are casting up shallow, there's a chance you might have to pull through some weeds or something. I'll do a, a liter of, of 10 pound usually, uh, fluorocarbon, uh, Berkeley 100% professional grade fluoro. And I'll do that at probably three and a half feet. And then I'll do a direct tie to my swim bait or my twister tail or whatever you're gonna pull down from there whether it be jigging or reeling it, and that's the system I use. I use the six foot six or the seven foot. I use medium light. I know you guys go medium jigging rod, and yeah, know. we're gonna we're <clears throat> gonna do the six foot medium fax action rod, but we're gonna use the super line like a ten four fire line or sure. crystal, yeah. something like that. And then we usually will tip that ten four. It's ten because it's ten pound test, four pound, four pound diameter. diameter. Um, but we'll usually tip that with that eight pound floral. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I do a little more just because I've noticed that a uh, couple things, like I said, pulling through, I, I, I don't want to leave jigs up there. Well, when... that's what you're doing wrong. That's why we catch more. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, and All it... you have to do is switch to the eight. <laughs> and then, uh, well, it doesn't matter if it's already a four pound diameter. It doesn't matter. So I might as well bump it up to 12, six, six pound diameter and still there you go. have more strength. Now you right? know your problem. That's right. And then, uh, but <laughs> it's all the leader. You're going with that 10 pound leader. Yeah. Right. It well, the, the floral leader is the smaller diameter too. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 and I think it also is more abrasion resistant. And so I don't want to lose baits unnecessarily, especially because, you know, it takes time to tie them on. And, and if you're in a tournament setting or a setting, you know, if you're out just fun fishing, whatever, you know, oh, you yeah. lose one here and there. Well, I'm telling you the reason why I like that eight pound floral, and we've used six quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. I don't like the heavier line, and this is going to be personal preference, but the reason is, is because you are pitching up shallow, you are pitching up to that structure, and when I get hung up, I want to be able to break it and retie. Yep. I don't want to have to jack around and horse it and horse it, and all of a sudden you can't get it undone. You're like, do I cut my fire line, or do I move in and try to get right up next to it so I can uh, loosen get it, it off, up? Right. No, all the fish wanna, are gone. I want to break off it. that 35 cent jig and just tie yeah. on a new one. That's, yeah. that's why I do it. And that's... I mean, that's all, all, you know, like you said, personal preference. But uh, I also like it, too, because then I can quickly transition from maybe you're not fishing in that, you're not casting up to that two to four feet of water. But let's say you are, are out over 15 or 18 feet of water, but the, the weeds or the brush are underneath the water and they're up to just two or three feet under the surface. So you're still technically fishing only in a couple feet of water. But you're out deep enough to where, you know, now if you get through the tops of that brush or whatever, you you know, you want to power it through. You want to pull it, pull it through. through yeah. yeah. So yeah. No, I understand what you're saying, but um, that's just what I do. I think, Mitch, mm -hmm. we fish a lot together, so I think we kind of run the same system. You yeah, have anything we do. To add? We, we do. Yeah. No. It just be ready. You know, that's that's the one thing. It, it, what's fun about it, it's, you know, it's kind of like jigging or a lot of the fishing we do, un, unlike trolling, I guess, mm -hmm. where, yeah, it's you against the fish. I mean, you, you get a split second to to bang that fish when you feel that tick because right. most of the time they don't hammer it. No, on um, that YouTube video, I was talking and I go, oh, I just missed one because I was talking... I just wasn't uh, ready. I'm shocked. And that then would I, be the case. And then I cast it up. <laughs> he the would next be talking time. and miss a fish. No, <laughs> miss a fish. Well, that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked that I missed one. Well, yeah. and, and I, but I think also it's important to remember. I mean, you know, like the the topic of the podcast is bass fishing for walleye. A lot of times they do destroy it. I mean, they'll come up on those swim baits and absolutely demolish it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a walleye, you know, like you said, middle of the day. Oh, walleyes don't come up and all that other stuff. Bull crap. Mm -hmm. I've seen them come up out of weeds and just inhale swim baits right in front of you. I mean, you can watch yeah. the whole bite, mm -hmm. jerk baits too. And so, and just inhale them and just hit them so hard that, you know, it would rival any large mouth. So you got to remember this. Hit. That brings me into it. We've talked a little bit about the gear, what you should be using. Um, but it's key in this too, to have your jag set right too. Absolutely. You want your drag to where, uh, I always kind of set it to where what my, if I have a 10 pound, a 10 pound test, four pound diameter, like the fire line. Right. I estimate what five pounds of pull would be. 
So I pull on that so it's about half the tensile strength of what that line would be. It's You can't measure it, but you just grab right, it right. to where your drag lets out. So when that fish loads up, it's plenty of backbone to lock it in and hook that fish up, right? Right. But it's also not too stiff that, bam, they hit it hard. And because of that Snap. violent strike, there goes right. your leader. Yep. Right. You know, so it's about that four or five pound. And, and when that's plenty. Right. You know, that's plenty to land. I've, I've caught several seven, eight pound fish on on that technique right so well and you know they're really they're, the reason that they you know sometimes they do they barely you can barely feel right, right. and i know what you're saying sometimes they smash it well really what's going on why are those fish there they're feeding they're feeding that's why they're up shallow yeah um you know <coughs> al linder they're competing <laughs> taught me years ago that yeah start shallow because those are your feeders you know they're aggressive yeah and move deep if you have to but yep. i think it's a hundred percent i think I and everybody too. just does it backwards well, everybody yep. does it back- yep. we do it still to well, those day, are the fish you but, see first. As well, you come rolling up on your graph, those are the fish you see, and you're like, oh, here's the fish, right? And here's the thing. And how the, many times The worst thing told, that happens, if you start catching fish in their smalls, and you're like, yeah, we're catching fish, right. you'll never move in. Right. Yep. You right. And you're always told, fish where there's fish, right? Fish the fish. Yep. And then and then if you don't start catching those fish out deep, you're like, we need to move. Well, why would you move when there's fish here? I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Well, why would you move? There's fish here. Mm. Well, because I'm looking for the active fish. So I'm not necessarily going to move across the lake. But, but I'm going to move in a little bit, and we're going to see where it goes. If you're finding active fish suspended <clears throat> outside of the shore, uh, and they're not going, right? there's a good chance they're still fish in that area, but they've pushed up shallow, Absolutely. and they're feeding. Yeah. Well, in a lot of these Midwest lakes, for a lot of our listeners in like Minnesota and stuff, they fish these, uh, well, what would be considered more of those prairie lakes, right? Mm-hmm. So they're kind of bowl lakes, and some of them in aren't so- very in deep. In southern Minnesota. Sure, and yeah, some of them yeah. aren't very deep. Um, you know, you control, these fish aren't going to get spooked. You control with your gas kicker motor all the way up in the three and a half, four feet of water crankbaits. And, you know, and you can put them off of boards or do whatever, keep them just, just a few, just a foot under the surface. And you're going to get fish doing that, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, you're going to catch fish doing that. Well, same deal with casting. You're, if you go up there and you start going in and you start fan casting some of these shallow flats, you're going to catch these fish cruising these flats looking for the easy meal and a jerk bait is an excellent presentation for that because every fish more or less every fish is going to come when you stop when it's suspended right when it's just mm-hmm. sitting there in front of them and man you go out on in this time of year all the way through kind of midsummer you know those fish cannot cannot resist it i had a crappie probably about 15 inches just destroy a swim bait two weeks ago and i mean hit it to the point where it almost jerked the pole out of my hand a crappie right a crappie yeah. whip, whip josh's ass <laughs> yeah. and it did and not only that but he it, it, oh my god it, yeah, it, it, spo- <laughs> it almost oh my god and, you know the water was a little off color and it just boom and i thought ah, oh, there's a big small ear nice walleye right big old crappie so, but that just goes to show it's aggressive fish feeding fish doesn't matter what species they're going to be up shallow be ready for the northern that occasional musky i mean name it it's going to happen yep. and you're going to catch them catfish how many times have we caught catfish doing that kind of stuff i know mm-hmm. talk about uh, jerk baits mitch since josh brought it up well you know i i really started fishing jerk baits a lot at night you know going for walleyes and sure enough it it is it's that cast crank it down to depth you know like just a few feet under and let it sit Right. Um, almost to where it kills you, you know. You're yep. yeah. trying to count it out, like ah, pop, 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 come yeah. on, yep, and and, sit again. You know, and and they do, and they hammer it a lot of times when, on that pause, yeah, or or right after it stops. You know, like if you're cranking real slow and sure. and stopping well, sure no, you know, everybody's been fishing bass with with uh, jerk baits forever, sure, and you know walleyes too. But oh, during the day, you know, yeah. a lot of people I think you know put them away, and it's just kind of a nighttime, you know, for the big giant walleyes, but. Oh, no, it, it is. It's that. It's the pause. I think it just triggers it where the the bait is susceptible for an attack. Absolutely. I, I will say though, that when when I'm fishing that, uh, we never even had this conversation. But when I'm fishing jerk baits in the daytime versus night, um, I'm probably fishing like that nine size. Where at night I go to the eleven, a little bigger. And bigger. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. why. Why do I do that? Well, and, a little and it, bit more profile with because you can't. It's, there's no light. Well, I don't know. Remember though, you, when you're talking nine or eleven for all these guys that are listening, that um, you know that might be a typical walleye bait that comes in nine or eleven, but these bass jerk baits aren't aren't no. sized that way. No, they're not. And and I use a lot of bass jerk baits. I love the cutters mm. from Berkeley. The cutters and they're like a, they would be like an eight. Yeah, if you're comparing, it's kind of a different mm. size. But the the lucky uh, lucky str- or the lucky um, Craft. crafts. I mean. You know, there's a lot of great mega bass. I mean, there's a lot of great bass 
um, jerk baits, uh, uh, KVD Strike King's got a good jerk bait too. Um, you know, that are just spectacular. And I'm telling you, I've been in July fishing in the, um, in, in the weeds that are growing up and you find a, a, a place in the weeds, a, a slight, you know, where they've been cleared out either by a boat or, mm-hmm. or there's something underneath that keeps them from growing right there. And you can watch those walleyes come up in, in the clear water. You can watch them a long ways out, either follow it up and hit it on the paws, or you'll watch them just roll up from underneath, like, you know, like jaws and just inhale your jerk bait. And it is nothing better. And I'm talking this, you know, the last time I did this was three days after the 4th of July at mm-hmm. 1030 in the morning. You know, you shouldn't be catching walleyes like that. Well, mm-hmm. that's where they were. That's what they well, were doing. So talking about an experience that we had. So we were fishing. It's probably, I mean, you can do the jerk baits any time, right? And it was right. probably mid June and we we're fishing, uh, crankbaits and we were casting into like these they almost looked like will we uh they were almost like a cat tail like rushes it was yeah. weird it was yeah. weird but they were thick so what we did because every time you we're ca- there's no open spot you just right. cast into them I mean, right. they're chuck full there's one every foot yeah you know and how do we work these fish we stepped it up to a 60 pound braid yeah and we'd mm-hmm. hit this and just whip it through yeah. that stuff and you let it pause yeah. and it would get between some stuff and it just float there and then bam yeah. Yeah, and then you had to have that sixty pound braid. We're like, guys thought we were nuts. You're like, well, you're using a sixty pound braid mm-hmm. to yeah. fish for wallet. Yeah, because every time we hooked up, there's there's a ton of these willow things everywhere, and they're getting all wrapped up. So you needed to be able to horse them out. Yeah, and yeah. have some control. Well, and yeah. it was getting hung up. So exactly. You, you just pop it real quick, and that's what's nice about that medium fast tick because and that super line, which is the braid. It, it's very very fast. So when you feel yourself getting hooked up, it's just a quick wham through it and it pulls through it and mm-hmm. you're, around, you're right. still fishing right and remember that the um fluorocarbon floats mm. so the fluorocarbon will uh if you use now the, we were direct tying no no i'm just saying if you use a fluorocarbon leader this will help you in some of these situations mm-hmm. with how your bait um suspends mm-hmm. so fluorocarbon floats so what you can do is you can use the thicker fluorocarbon and these baits that maybe go a little, a touch too deep. Let's say you only want to go, let's say the weeds come it up. It has to, more buoyancy. Yeah, than, so than it comes mono. up, so it's got, let's say it comes two feet under the surface and your jerk bait is going to two foot, three inches. Mm-hmm. You're like, ah. So a little trick one of the bass guys told me is you use 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon. You're doing jerk baits anyways, it's invisible anyways. And um, it helps keep that bait suspended that, you know, inch, inch and a half higher so it doesn't get down in those weeds and it'll help you with that presentation keep it totally right where you want it in the strike zone I, i've got i've got one so all these most jerk baits are you know suspending when you see one that's suspending mm-hmm. um yeah it, when you when you stop cranking mm-hmm. it should just stop right there right yep. well if you i usually test all mine and oh yeah sometimes they, they either slowly sink yep. or slowly rise well it, one of my one of my buddies taught me this one night where he he showed me and sure enough my it was a smithwick a rogue yeah um it was just slowly rising yeah just right there on the shore but all of a sudden he pulls out these lead dots um Mm -hmm. they've got adhesive on the back and we slapped one on the belly of it it held it just perfect perfect so check it out fine tune them And and i've seen guys put a float bead on front of it because they had the opposite it was slowly sinking and they put a float bead and it makes that it keeps that uh, that nose up a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. so good things for you guys to try out on the water. I mean, uh, just get out there first of all, but don't be afraid to go shallow. You know, because uh, there's a lot of fish up shell, and yeah. I think a lot of guys miss the boat. And use that. these yeah. use these swim baits. You know, use these uh, like the Berkeley Ripple Shad and these other swim baits that, um, you know, you look at and they, they typically come across right away as more like a bass type bait. Mm-hmm. But don't be afraid to buy those. Pull them out, and uh, they work usually at pretty slow retrieves. And you can slow roll. We're usually using like the three to five inch ones. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the good. Four is my favorite, but um, you know, and you just slow roll them through uh, over the tops of weeds, roll them around rocks. I mean, it is a great search bait, and it is a bait to where you know you can um, commonly switch between swim baits and jerk and jerk baits and crank baits. I'll have all three on the front of the boat, and I'll just roll through them in a spot. And get yeah, fish sometimes on they want one yeah. or the other. And yeah, and, try. and one thing before we wrap it up too is when you're when you're if you're pitching those jigs because it made me think of it is uh, Berkeley has 
And I, it's a glide bait. It's a glide jig. Mm -hmm. And it looks almost like it's got two little fins on it. So when you're working that jig and you're just you're slow retrieving it and you let it drop, it'll drop off to the left or right. Right. It's, a, it's another good thing to have if you're going to try that shallow water. Right. So, yeah. hey, from everybody at All Eyes on Fishing, we appreciate uh, you listening to us. Make sure you're following us on alleyesonfishing.com. We also have some apparel there that we have out on our website. So yeah, check which that we're, out. We're revamping. So we're going to, we, we came out with some stuff and we're going to come out with some, some other ones and we're doing some giveaways and we have some towels now, which were pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, and we're going to do all that stuff. So we're always trying to find ways to, to uh, get things, you know, for you guys that are, are more affordable and easier to get out to you. Hey, and uh, I want to ask everybody, uh, do us a favor. Um, tell your friends. If you if you like our podcast, if we're giving you some tips that's helping you become a better fisherman, um, let them know about us. We, we want more people to listen. So, we do. yeah, please spread the word. Yep. A lot of this, this, this podcast tonight we're talking about came from a listener. Yep. They asked us, so send us any things. You can message us on Facebook, but a lot of our stuff comes in uh, at, our, at our email, which is alleyesonfishing at gmail.com. Com. Yep. So from everybody at All Eyes on Fishing, have a great night. Thanks. This has been All Eyes on Fishing. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next time where we discuss all of your favorite fishing topics. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Check out our videos on YouTube or read our blog at alleyesonfishing.com. All Eyes on Fishing leading you to the next level.